Hello, programmers. Welcome to our channel. What does a simple queue in data structures? If you have the same question, you are in right place. So now let's take a real-time example where Q works. Think about situation of collecting movie tickets at the box office, where there is a queue of five people. Each person leaves the queue after taking the ticket. They leave one after the other. Let's observe this situation carefully. As we can observe, the person who came first will leave first. Well, now the question is, what's the principle? And the answer is first in, first out. As programmers, how can we use this in our programming? And the answer is using arrays. In fact, there are many ways to implement Q. Let's use the easiest way. What's an array? An array is a collection of similar data elements stored at contiguous memory locations. Now let's try to insert people who were in the queue into the array. Let's insert five people into the array and track the index numbers of the array. And then now the question is, what's the starting index number of the array? You are right. The starting index number of the array is zero. As we have understood what is an array, let's implement it. Now let's see the operations performed in Q. The operations are in Q, which is also known as insertion, DQ, which is also known as deletion, is full, which we used to check whether Q is full or not, is empty, which we used to check whether Q is empty or not, and display, to display the elements inside the queue. Now let's see how insertion works and let's create program on it. Let's see how NQ works. We need two variables for NQ, front and rear, where initially front equal to zero, and rear equal to minus one. Every time we try to insert an item, we have to increment rear by one. So now let's increment rear by one, and try to insert a random number. And to insert another items, we have to increment rear and insert. Increment and insert. Increment and insert. Increment and insert. So now the question is when do we say the queue is full or overflow? When rear equal to equal the size of an array minus one. Now let's write the function for nq in turbo c++. Create a new file and name it anything you want with .c's extension. Start with some pre-processing statements. and then declare the global variables which we need for NQ. They are array with name Q and size of 5. int front, which equal to zero. int re equal to minus one initially and in item, for taking which item to be inserted. Let's start the NQ function with return type void. Write the if condition to check whether Q is full or not. If it is full, we have to print Q overflow. If else we have space to insert.
So let's know which item has to be inserted and store it in item variable and increment rear by one and assign. Q of rear equal to item. As the same way let's do it for deletion. Before that, the question is when do we say the queue is empty or underflow? The answer is, if rear equal to equal to front minus one. Let's see how deletion happens. To delete the items we use front variable. Every time we delete one item, we have to increment front by one. So first deletion happens and then we increment. Let's delete the items. Now delete the first item and increment. Delete and increment. Delete and increment. Delete and increment. Let's start DQ function with return type void. First let's check whether the queue is empty or not. If it is empty we don't have items to delete, so, we print Q underflow. Else we have some items to delete? So now let's delete the first item which Q of front and then increment it by one. And then start the display function with return type void. To display the items in the queue we need a for loop. So let's take a counter variable i, where i equal to front, i less than or equal to rear, and we will be incrementing i each time we print an item. And now let's start the main function and ask the user which operation he wants to perform. For that we need to take the user's choice and stored variable choice. Let's print all the operations in while loop, and then ask the user to enter their choice and store it in choice variable.
And now let's start a switch inside the while loop based on choice. If the choice is 1, we trigger and queue function. If it is 2, we trigger DQ. If it is 3, we trigger display function and If user gives any other choice, the default case is to say the user to print valid option. Let's compile it by pressing ALT plus F9. And then execute by pressing CTRL plus F9, and that executes the program. Now select any options you want and work on it. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more content like this.